in the absence of love for America, for our way of life that emanates from this wretched lying woman cannot be overstated. And the disgrace of her being hired to be part of NBC's, quote, team, according to the person who announced the hiring, Harry Budolph Brown, isn't just cynical, it's utterly depraved. But hey, here's the good news for all the journalists at NBC who are risking their lives somewhere around the world right now to report the truth. They can rest easy knowing with Ronna McDaniel on their team now, she'll always be ready to take one for it. This is The Warning. 225 days remain on this Palm Sunday until the American people will make a decision about the destiny of the American nation. Today, Rona Romney McDaniel, the former chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, recently announced as an analyst for NBC News and MSNBC, made her debut on the flagship public affairs program of the network, Meet the Press, hosted by Kristen Welker. Ms. Welker began by saying and disclosing that she was not involved whatsoever in the decision to hire Rona McDaniel. I'll be joined by former RNC chair Rhonda McDaniel in her first interview since stepping down as party chair. In full disclosure to our viewers, this interview was scheduled weeks before it was announced that McDaniel would become a paid NBC News contributor. This will be a news interview, and I was not involved in her hiring. Second, she did not receive Rona McDaniel as a colleague, but rather gave her a hard news interview. And during that interview, Ms. Welker destroyed Rona McDaniel's credibility. She unmasked her completely, shattering the intellectual inconsistencies, but most importantly, the lies, the doublespeak, the flippancy, and in the end, more than anything, she took her to task for her utter failure of responsibility. This is a fundamental issue in America, this concept of responsibility. And I want to talk about it. I'm going to explain with perfect clarity what it is that Rona McDaniel failed to do. I'm going to talk directly about the stench emanating by the decision by NBC News executives to bring this liar who tried to incite an insurrection to overthrow the government in the name of Donald Trump, complicit with him step by step, should never, ever again appear on the air of NBC News. We live in an era where trust has completely collapsed between the American people and very nearly every single institution that you can think to name. Among the collapse is between the American people and the news media who not only do Americans not trust, but largely revile. A lot of this has been stoked by Donald Trump and by an extremist movement that has threatened to jail reporters, jail political opponents, that is running on a platform of seeking revenge and vengeance. Ms. Welker asked none of these questions of Rona McDaniel. She has not yet made comment on what her views are regarding the president's plans to take out retribution on his opponents and half the country that he doesn't like. You see, 
You can watch the clip where Rona Romney McDaniel, not so cleverly, does the usual. It's not a Republican issue, you see, according to her. It's a Republican and Democratic issue, though, so far as I can see, according to the facts, according to reality, according to video, the political party in the United States that was associated with mayhem, chaos, and violence, and a massive lie aimed at the very cornerstone of the existence of the American Republic, which is that we assign leadership through the outcome of elections, exists squarely within one party, the Republican Party. McDaniel says it's in both. I don't think violence should be in our political discourse, Republican or Democrat. We live in an age where trust has completely collapsed between the American people and most every institution you could think to name. High up on the list, of course, are the political parties, but also the broadcast television networks, the media as a whole. The media has been relentlessly attacked by Donald Trump and by his extremist movement. He has threatened to jail reporters. He has sought to intimidate them. He has created an environment of threat and malice for any journalist who seeks to cover his events. And it is important to understand that never once did Rona Romney McDaniel ever say enough. Never once did she use her platform as chairwoman of the party to speak out for the right. And this is important because the first nominee of the party, known as the Grand Old Party, to be elected president was Abraham Lincoln. And he talked about these issues. And the Republican Party is the third oldest political party in the world. Like the Democratic Party, it is one of the most important institutions in world history for the advancement of human dignity and freedom. The Republican Party is the party of Trump today. And so it is the party of insurrection. And yes, indeed, Chairwoman McDaniel, it is the party of January 6th. Just like Fox News is the network of January 6th. And Tucker Carlson is their chief advocate. What happened on January 6th was a crime against the Republic, against the US Constitution, and against the American people. It was a coup, and it was incited by lies. I predicted the violence, and I predicted the coup. I did it in September of 2020. The writing was on the wall. It is no small thing, the legitimacy of the president of the United States, which comes from only one wellspring, the outcome of a choice that is the right of the American people. What Donald Trump did isn't just unforgivable, it was a violent offense against our way of life, our history, and the wisdom of our founding fathers. Americans transferred power politically and peacefully from 1797 until early 2021. And then it became bloodied. The peaceful transition of power is the most important of America's traditions, and it is America's greatest invention. Kristen Welker got right to the heart of the matter. She asked Rona McDaniel about her lack of trust, why people would not trust her, why some are shocked that NBC News could have hired her. She put the issue of credibility directly on the table. Did Rona Romney McDaniel, as the chairwoman 
of the third oldest political party in the world, an American political party, have an obligation to stand up and to speak out? And the answer to that question is she did. She absolutely did. And she was absolutely derelict in that responsibility. She is unfit at every conceivable level, as unfit as Sean Spicer, as unfit as Kaylee McEnany, as unfit as Kelly Ann Conway, to work at any credible journalistic enterprise that values truth and has standards and has rules and understands that it has a public trust and an obligation to inform a free people about the issues that matter with this passion and clarity and credibility. The scandal that is playing out is evolving. MSNBC president Rashida Jones has already said that Rona McDaniel will never appear on an MSNBC program. And after today's shattering interview, I predict she will never again appear as a colleague of any NBC journalist on an NBC News program. Because what Rona Romney McDaniel did is participate in a conspiracy involving one of the greatest lies in American history. She was a party to that lie, a contributor to the lie. She was complicit in spreading the lie. Rona Romney McDaniel was caught lying in a way, God forbid, that if she was in a courtroom, it is inconceivable to think that she would not be rebuked by the judge for her dissembling in nonsensical sentences where she tried to explain that, in fact, when she called the Michigan election officials, she wasn't trying to subvert a legitimate outcome. In the world that she lives in, down is up and up is down. Nothing is real. The outrage that she was describing as threats was directed at people who were delaying for partisan reasons the certification of an election for the winner. In other words, what Rona McDaniel is saying is the people who sought to engage in a form of sedition to say, no, we demand power though we lost who were putting pressure on people with no evidence, except for the powers of their ambition to lie for power, that they must do something that no American has done. Try to burn it all down in the name of a cult of personality to keep a man who lost the presidency in power. Those people were being pressured by a cabal that wanted them to flip the script on the result of an election. That's why people were upset. And now Rona McDaniel appears on NBC News on the flagship program, Meet the Press, explaining in her topsy-turvy view of reality that no, in fact, those people were victims. It's all madness. It's insanity. And this is precisely what George Orwell was trying to warn all free people about so long ago. I'm going to go through the entirety of the interview that took place on Meet the Press this Palm Sunday, March 24th, 2024, 225 days to the election on the front edge of a journalism crisis, question by question. Let's watch Kristen Welker ask the first two questions and watch the McDaniel answer. 
Let's dive right into this and start with your decision to step down as RNC chair. If you can, take me behind the scenes a little bit. Were you pushed out of your role? Well, there's no question that as RNC chair, you have to remain neutral. And we had a primary process. And so we did have debates, right? We had debates and there was tension and a little friction that started during that process. It was well played out in the media. And I knew at that point when I was doing that role and we were going to have debates that when the nominee came forward and it was likely to be President Trump, that they would want to switch. And that's his right as nominee. And so were you pushed out by him? He, he absolutely wanted me to, to move aside and wanted Michael Watley and Laura Trump to come in. It is very important to understand that Ronna McDaniel is completely and utterly full of shit here at a five-star level. First, she was handpicked by Donald Trump to be the RNC chairwoman back a few years ago. In fact, at his insistence, she dropped the name Romney. Now, let's just talk about the word neutral, neutrality, its concept and its meaning. Like Switzerland is neutral, meaning they don't pick sides ever. They stay neutral, as in even during World War II between the Allies and the Nazi Germans, Switzerland wasn't involved in the fight. Rona McDaniel was involved in the fight because she called for Nikki Haley to withdraw from the race in the middle of the fight. What is it that we're seeing here? What you're seeing here is the equivalent of Kristen Welker looking at a red chair and saying, Rana, I see a red chair because there's a red chair. What do you see? And Ronna McDaniel explaining that, in fact, the red chair is not red, that it's blue. And because of her neutrality, because of her discernment, because she floated above the whole MAGA enterprise from the beginning and really wasn't part of it, just a neutral figure over there at the party, we can trust her. It's all nonsense. Kristen Welker over the course of this interview, will shatter with her questioning Ronna McDaniel's credibility completely. Let's talk about the election now. Donald Trump says one of his first acts, if he is reelected to a second term, would be, quote, to free those charged and convicted of crimes related to January 6th. Do you support that? I want to be very clear. The violence that happened on January 6th is unacceptable. It doesn't represent our country. It certainly does not represent my party. It does represent the Republican Party, period, full stop, because the Republican Party is the MAGA party, and the MAGA party incited the insurrection. This is gaslighting at an epic level. Ted Cruz incited the insurrection. Josh Hawley incited the insurrection. Marjorie Taylor Greene incited the insurrection. Lauren Boebert did, and Matt Gates did, and many more did. Yes, Ronna McDaniel put out a statement on January 6th, just like this man, Kevin McCarthy, who went to Mar-a-Lago a week later to rehabilitate Donald Trump and then spent the next year denying that the insurrection happened at all, that a coup attempt was made. The Republican Party is the party that has told us that the happy people in the Capitol were Taurus, that the attack was a false flag operation. What party is Roger Stone affiliated with? In what party can Nazi Nick Fuentes sit comfortably at the table. It is Ronna McDaniel's Republican Party. She is one of the most unsuccessful chairs of a major party in American history when it comes to election outcomes. 
But what she achieved is historic nonetheless, because it is Ronna McDaniel who presided over the transformation, along with her master, Donald Trump, of the Republican Party into an American fascist party. That is her legacy. The people that she is talking about are convicted criminals. Some of them, like Stuart Rhodes, convicted of seditious conspiracy. For her entire tenure as RNC chairman, she has stood with absolute indifference against these people. She has not condemned Trump a single time when he intimated violence be used as legitimate political means. She has never spoken out. So let's watch. Do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do not think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. So you disagree with that? He's been saying that for months. Rana, why not speak out earlier? Why just speak out about that now? When you're the RNC chair, you, you kind of take one for the whole team, right? Now I get to be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. Because sometimes when you're the RNC chair, you take one for the team, right? You lie. You participate in a coup. You do everything you can to subvert the American way of life and destroy the republic that's endured for almost 250 years because Donald Trump told you to do so, right? Understand, the person who just said that can never, ever, ever appear again on an NBC News platform, certainly not as a, quote, colleague, or friend of whomever it may be that is asking them questions and have the network maintain its credibility. That answer demonstrates an absence of character that is staggering. The indifference is stupefying. What Elie Wiesel talked about was that the opposite of love is not hate, it is indifference. In the absence of love for America, for our way of life that emanates from this wretched lying woman cannot be overstated. And the disgrace of her being hired to be part of NBC's quote team according to the person who announced the hiring, Harry Budolph Brown, isn't just cynical, it's utterly depraved. But hey, here's the good news for all the journalists at NBC who are risking their lives somewhere around the world right now to report the truth. They can rest easy knowing with Ronna McDaniel on their team now, she'll always be ready to take one for it. Now, let's watch this verbal trick. I don't think violence should be in our political system, either Republican or Democrat. Now, first off, because now she works for NBC News, the name of the oldest political party in the world is not the Democrat Party. It is the Democratic Party. And so, Again, we hear Ronna McDaniel talking about things like respect, about decency. She can't even say the name of an American institution that was led by Franklin Roosevelt's name properly. The party that John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy belonged to was the Democratic Party. And there is no violence associated with the Democratic Party in 2024 America. The Democratic Party doesn't have militia groups that affiliate with it, like the Proud Boys, 
like the Oath Keepers, the Democratic candidate for president of the United States in 2020, didn't say to this man at the Oath Keepers and to the Proud Boys, stand ready, stand back, and stand by until they attack the Capitol on January 6th. There is no bomber like Cesar Syoc, who tried to assassinate Trump's political opponents. Who in the Democratic Party is calling for retribution, calling for revenge? Who in the Democratic Party is talking about there being blood on the streets? Who in the Democratic Party ever talked about punching political opponents in the face at their rallies? Who ever talked about doing violence to reporters? This is a fiction. It's a lie, just like the election lie. And she's on television, on a news program, the oldest public affairs program in the nation telling that lie, not as the disgraced chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, but as an employee of NBC News who can't get the name of the Democratic Party correctly. Now, according to the senior vice president of news, Harry Budolph Brown, this is the voice needed by the NBC audience right now to explain things. Mitch McConnell said that Donald Trump was practically and morally responsible for the attack on the Capitol. Do you agree with him? You know, I don't think he wanted that attack to happen on the Capitol, but I will say, that that attack is a dark day in our history. There's nothing to be proud of about that day. There's nothing that we can look back and say this was good. It's changed our, our whole country. And so I condemn what happened on January 6th. Do I think he wanted that to happen or pushed that to happen? I don't. Well, now he seems to be very proud about it. He calls it a beautiful day. Again, he's talking about freeing those who've been convicted. He, if you ask some of those who were convicted, they say they were there because Trump asked them to be there. Does he not bear I want to be really clear. for that day? First of all, the RNC was not there on January 6th. But what about Let's set the record straight here, Rana. The RNC was there. They most certainly were there. You know why they were there, Rana? I'm going to slow it down for you. The RNC was there because Trump incited the insurrection, the violence, and the riot. He did it. The person who did it is the same person who calls it a beautiful, perfect day. It's the same person who's promising to free the criminals that he just saluted. Again, this is an example of gaslighting at an epic level. It is positively Orwellian. The question that Kristen Welker asked is a great question. The word moral is very rarely used in a question posed by a reporter to a politician, moral responsibility. Donald Trump doesn't bear all of the responsibility, but he bears the moral responsibility. It was the Trump insurrection and the idea, the dissociation that Ronna McDaniel allows herself to hold is delusional. The RNC wasn't there. The RNC was there, Rana. You were there, Rana. You helped make it happen. But what makes you so personally despicable is that you could have helped stop it. I want to turn now to your actions in the aftermath of the 2020 election. Sure. On November 17th, you and Donald Trump were recorded pushing two Republican Michigan officials, election officials, not to certify the results of the election. And on the call, you're recorded as saying, quote, if you can go home tonight, do not sign it. We will get you attorneys. 
Do you have regrets about that phone call in your actions? I'm so that glad day? you asked me about this because I've never had a chance to respond to this. And if you know the course of what happened that night, these two individuals went into a hearing. They voted no. They didn't vote not to certify. They said, you know, we want an audit. There were some problems in Wayne County. They've been consistent. They've been well documented over subsequent elections. And they said, as canvassers, we think we should have an audit before we certify. That's all they asked for. Once the public hearing opened, they were called such vicious names, such vile names, family members were being threatened, that they changed their vote and they left shaken. And I did call them and say, nobody, and I think we should agree with the, on this as Republicans and Democrats, nobody should be threatened or bullied or pushed to change a vote. And that's what happened to them. And I want to finish by saying, our call that night was to say, are you okay? That's my recollection. It was three and a half years ago. These are people I knew. I live in Wayne County. Are you okay? Are you all right? Vote your conscience, not pushing them to do anything. We're now moving into the part of the interview. Uh, that's really disturbing to watch as the gaslighter and the gaslighting completely unravel. And we need to pick this apart because Kristen Welker didn't have the time to do it. But it's very important to understand the absurdity of the argument that McDaniel is making here. What Ronna McDaniel did was outrageous. She called a local election official as the head of a national party with the president of the United States to exert the maximum pressure that could conceivably be exerted to the end of getting that election official to deny the result of an election. It is not a matter of conscience, the question of whether to certify an election. It is a question of math, and it is a requirement of law. It is an obligation of citizenship, it is an aspect of the responsibility and duty that Ronna McDaniel so thoroughly failed in her betrayal of her country and the American way of life. She is telling Kristen Welker that the election workers were threatened when in fact it was people responding with outrage because these workers were playing around with the certification of a result that was numerically perfectly clear. And now, as is always the case, at least in the MAGA bubble, we see the delusion spill out. In the upside down world, the abuser is always the victim, the wrongdoer, always the hero. What Rana McDaniel did and how she explains it, how she justifies it, is a profound disqualification for working for any credible news organization that has any standards whatsoever. What you are listening to in this moment is bad dad Bob level bullshit of the 10 star variety. It doesn't even make sense. She is telling you that there is no up and there is no down, that red is blue and blue is yellow and yellow is green. It is gaslighting at an epic level. And Kristen Welker, to her credit, is having none of it. Even the Supreme Court, Ronna, didn't take up concerns about the election results in Pennsylvania and a slew of other states. Let me just let me just stick to, though, I want to allow you to yeah. continue to answer questions about your role uh, in the 2020 election. Beyond the call that we were just discussing, the RNC helped the Trump campaign assemble fake electors in Michigan, provide a platform for Trump lawyers to hold that news conference with Rudy Giuliani alleging a global conspiracy to rig the election against Trump, and you yourself called the election rigged multiple times. Did you enable Donald Trump to spread election lies? Let's go back to time. But initially, you... no, initially in, in November of 2020, there were concerns everywhere. Imagine you saw videos being put out, all types of things. 
you have to track that down. So where I was in 2020 and the quotes that are being taken from a very long, long time ago, three and a half years ago, to where I am today, you've got to allow the process to play out. Did you or did you not enable Donald Trump's election lies, Ronna McDaniel? And the answer incontrovertibly is yes. You did it over and over again, as did the institution that you ran, that you denied the presence of at the January 6th insurrection, which was the outcome of all of the lies that you were so deeply involved in, including Rudolph Giuliani's lies in outlandish news conferences. You, Ronna McDaniel, are responsible for it. You did it. You were Donald Trump's Martin Borman. You were his handmaid, and he couldn't have done it without you. The closing of this interview is rather astonishing as Kristen Welker brings it home. The gaslighting is astonishing, too. The question that Kristen Welker begins the closing is, how can you be trusted? In essence, what she is asking is, how can the NBC News audience trust you, given how many times you have lied? Now, there's a simple answer to the question around trust, and it would be this. And I say this very directly to everybody in the warning community who is watching this. You can trust me because I will tell you the truth. But notice, Ronna McDaniel cannot say the obvious part out loud because Ronna McDaniel cannot answer this question by telling you that she's telling you the truth while she's gaslighting you. Kristen Welker, like a skilled boxer, is going to slip left and she's going to ask another question. Let's watch. Speak to the people who hold you responsible for enabling Donald Trump and his mistruths, his lies about the election. Why should they trust you when they say they don't? I, I think you should tr trust me. I, I mean, I can't, I can't speak to people who don't trust different voices. I think you should be able to hear from different voices. And I, and I haven't been able to talk to you about the concerns I had going into that election. And I wish there was more of a dialogue from that. But let me be very clear. I love this country. I come from a state that's been overlooked. I don't see my state represented in a lot of news media. Uh, I, I don't go home as Chairman Ronna McDaniel. I'm mom Ronna McDaniel. I go to the grocery store. I do all these things. And I really feel like if our country is going to survive, we need to be able to have difficult conversations like this in a respectful way. We need more of that in our country. But we also okay. can't go into our echo chambers and say, I'm only going to listen to what Re Democrats have to say, and I'm only going to listen to Republicans have to say, listen to it and make your own opinion. I go to the grocery store. <laughs> Are you shitting me? She actually said that out loud. And I love my country. I love America. She has a funny way of showing it. She doesn't love America because she has indifference towards America. Because America isn't a piece of land. It is an idea. And an ideal. And when her time came, when she could have said no or enough and understood that as chairwoman of the Republican National Committee that she had a higher responsibility, she failed. She was derelict. She lied. She twisted the truth. She burned the flag. That's what she did. She burned it, desecrated it, trampled on it. Every American value and ideal that you can think of, she failed. And now she's on network television, branded with the credibility of NBC News, to spin this vile bullshit and gaslight millions in the name of balance and in the name of fairness. I have a prediction. The journalists at NBC News are going to rebel against their executives. They won't tolerate it, and they shouldn't. Because what Ronna McDaniel did was wrong. And today, her credibility was as thoroughly destroyed in a network television interview as it could conceivably be. Somewhere up there, 
Tim Russert is smiling down. Because what happened on Meet the Press this morning is what's supposed to happen on Meet the Press. Public officials get held to account, and specifically over their BS. And occasionally, a genuinely rancid and contemptible person crosses into that zone. And make no mistake, Ronna McDaniel is such a person. What she did was contemptible. It was appalling. She betrayed this country as badly as Trump did. And it ought to be called out. The fact that she's being paid $300,000 a year by NBC News to lie to its audience, to try to interpret this nonsense and tell them that down is up and up is down is wrong. And I suspect we've seen the last of her, which is good. On election day of 2008, Barack Obama was transformed. He was transformed from Illinois' junior senator and the Democratic nominee to become the president-elect of the United States. And I was the person who placed the phone call on John McCain's behalf. I passed the phone with Barack Obama, the president-elect on the other end, to the first person who mattered who addressed him as such. That person was Senator McCain, who said, God bless you, Mr. President-elect, and then delivered a concession speech. On that night, his vice presidential candidate wanted to give a speech desecrating the beginning of the process by which power is transferred peacefully. I would not allow it. The scene that played out was memorialized in a movie. This country has just elected the first African-American president in the history of its existence. And it is the concession speech that will legitimize his succession as commander in chief. It is a serious and solemn occasion. And John McCain and only John McCain will be giving this sacred speech. This is how it has been done in every presidential election since the dawn of the Republic. And you, Sarah Palin, will not change the importance of this proud American tradition. It's pretty close to exactly what happened. But I'm going to tell Rona McDaniel what her responsibility was. The very first time Donald Trump said that the election results would only be legitimate if he won. And that was long before January 5th or 4th, or even the night of the election. It was her job to speak, to speak out, and to say, no, we will not get in line behind that. She had a powerful position, an important office, and she desecrated it, like she desecrated her duty to the country. The leader of one of the major parties became utterly complicit in an extremist movement she lost control of the party, allowed it to be turned into a grift, but none of that matters, and none of that disqualifies her from appearing as an analyst on a network. What does is her lying. She can't tell the truth, whether it is pathological, whether it is a rotten character, the fact of the matter is, how do you ever put this woman into the same room with Lester Holt and Savannah Guthrie, who are required when the occasion calls for it to deliver the darkest news at the most dangerous hours to a free people who need to know what is true and what is not, what is real, what is not, and who won? the presidential election. One of the great tragedies of this era is the collapse of journalism and its ethics. The abomination, for example, of Brett Baer, the quote unquote hard news guy, 
at Fox, who was terrified of telling Fox News watchers that the Trump Fuhrer had lost. That's not news. That's propaganda. And it is deeply, deeply dangerous in a free society. Over and over again, Rona McDaniel tried to explicate herself from the things she did by saying she did none of them. When the record is clear, she did all of them. And now she's going to go sit next to Richard Engel, who she disparaged while attacking all of his other colleagues as a peer and a colleague, and sit there and what? Lie to the audience in the name of balance? This is a great journalism crisis brought upon NBC by the cynical executives of NBC, who just treated the new standards of one of the oldest broadcast networks in the world, like Kellyanne Conway treated the Hatch Act, like it doesn't apply to them. More than anything else, what Rona McDaniel is, is a liar. It's an unpleasant word, but well-earned and well-deserved. Because for Rona McDaniel, she's now come out of the bubble of a cult and into a world where there are some of us who demand consequences for the people who lied over and over and over again, attacking the Constitution and the outcome of a free election, which even through this very hour on Meet the Press, she continues to disparage. She continues to do the wink and nod to say all of the things that intimate and suggest that, in fact, no, the election was not free, the election was not fair, that Joe Biden is tainted, he's illegitimate. It is the greatest lie in American history. And one of the principal architects of it, who is utterly indifferent to its spread, now will carry next to her name the words NBC News. And all of this is supposed to be what? What it is, is a sick joke. Unless the serious people with actual responsibility at the network, not Rebecca Blumenstein, nay of the New York Times, the world's leading access journalism institution and puzzle company, or Ms. Kudolf Brown, formerly of Politico. The journalists at NBC News have a responsibility just like the responsibility that Kristen Welker asked Rona McDaniel about to make sure that Rona McDaniel never abuses the viewers and the audience that trust NBC News with reality to ever be seen on their airwaves again. Thank you for listening to my political commentary. If you like what you heard today, please also consider subscribing to The Warning, daily newsletter on Substack.